Goodbye, Mummy. On this episode of Bondi Vet. <laughs> can Danny help this brave new mum find a loving home for her pups? We just need to get them out of the shelter as quick as possible. There's definitely some sort of abnormality going on in the back legs. Lisa takes drastic action after a shock finding on a family pet. It was so much worse than what I was expecting. When I'm listening to Markson's chest, I'm not hearing what I want to hear. And Chris thinks inside the box to help a rat with a breathing problem. I think this is going to work. Get your own personal steam room. You make my world a better place. Come on, there's your girl. date. I'm really excited but I'm also a little bit nervous. <laughs> in Melbourne, an excited Danny is on her way to a new job at the Lost Dogs Home. I've always wanted to work in an animal welfare role so I think working at an organisation like this is going to be a bit of a dream of mine. Oh, I hope it goes well today. <laughs> hey, you're <bud>. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Hi. Lee, nice to meet you. You too. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Welcoming Danny to the team is Director of Operations Liz Walker. Do you want to take some time first so I can show you around? That would be amazing. All right, Beautiful. let's go. Thank you. <laughs> we are extremely excited to have Danny join the Lost Dogs Home. Here we've got our main prep area. We've got our two surgical areas. Our veterinary services department is vital to everything that we do, it's the heart. So to have her talent and her skill joining the team, outstanding. We've got x-ray down here. I really am overwhelmed with how ginormous the Lost Dogs home is. There are so many animals, not just here, but out in foster and rescue. It's just incredible just the sheer number of animals are being looked after. So I think got my work cut out for me. <laughs> and this girl here is Katie. She's our happy staffie. Hi, you Katie girl. You can come in and say hi. Yeah. Goodbye. Oh, hi, you pup. Oh, I love. So the shelter had more than 13,000 animals come through it last year. That is absolutely incredible, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's so sad. It really breaks my heart when I initially meet animals that have clearly come from hard times. They don't have anyone to care for them. And so being able to step in and be that person and be able to make a difference to their life, it's just so fulfilling. But Danny's tour is cut short when she's called in to check on some new arrivals. Hello. Oh, hello. I hear you've got a gorgeous little mama here. You're here to meet Squeaky. Yes. Yeah. Stray dog Squeak has just given birth to three puppies less than 24 hours after arriving at the shelter. Well, you look very happy. Like being a mama, eh? So Squeak arrived and wasn't actually showing any indicators of being heavily pregnant. And so it was a bit of a surprise the morning after when the animal attendants went to go and feed her. She uh, brought one of her little puppies up as if it was a soft toy to show off. I believe she was found in an abandoned factory. No microchip, no ID found. It's so bizarre because she's such a friendly, well-adjusted dog. I know, you think she's dog. been a well-loved little yeah, pet. She, we just want to get her back into a home as quick as possible. Let's have a little look at you. There we go. Hi. Oh, hi. But before the little family can go into foster care, Danny first needs to make sure everyone is in good health. I think she's definitely thin. Definitely underweight, for yeah. sure. Yeah. And uh, her coat condition, she needs a good bath and a good brush out. She is a bit skinny, so having a feel on her ribs for a condition there, we definitely need to fatten her up a little bit. But it's not just Squeak's poor condition that's concerning Danny. She's got an interesting little coloured nose there. It's got a little patch, it's not pigmented. There's an area on Squeak's nose that's got no pigment. It's also got no hair, which is unusual. Maybe there's something lurking there. It doesn't feel like there's any growth. There's no sort of inflammation or crusting or anything going on that I can see. Might just have to keep monitoring that. With Squeak in reasonable health, it's time to check out her babies. 
I'm just putting on some PPE gear today to protect the pups for any possible infectious diseases that I may have picked up around the shelter. Oh, look at you, you gorgeous little muffin. <gasps> so tiny, hey? The bright pink in their nose, which is what you want to see in a puppy, you want to see that bright pink mucous membranes. They've got great little suckle reflexes. This one's a little runt, hey? They're just the little ones, we'll have to keep a close eye on you. The most important thing for pups is that they are feeding well from their mums and getting all their nutrition and antibodies. Squeak seems to be the most caring mum in the world. She's so attentive to her pups, letting them feed happily, going and checking on them, helping them toilet. She's just a special little dog. Oh, I'm sorry to disturb your sleep, my sweet. Huge relief to know that mum and pups are healthy. We just need to get them out of the shelter as quick as possible to maintain that uh, level of health. Good little bubby, hey? Are you gonna be able to squeeze in there? Is it gonna, if it's a bit squashy? Good job. Oh, oh, gorgeous. Waiting to take home the new family is experienced foster carer, Annie. It's very important to me to like be a part of rescue. I think we've worked out that we've done 43 fosters now. Hello. Danny, this is Annie. Hi, Annie. nice to meet you. And this little squeak. Oh, <laughs> we've had puppies before, but we've never had a mum and puppies, and we've definitely never had puppies this young. That's nice. Oh, thank you. We're going to be good friends, man. I mean, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a bit nervous. No! Oh look, you're a good mama, aren't you? I promise you. I'm taking good care of your babies, I promise. Annie just seems like an absolute darling. She is so passionate and devotes so much time and energy into all of these animals, so thank goodness for people like her. See you later, darling girl, hey? You go rest up, miss. It's been a satisfying first day for Danny at her new workplace. The Lost Dogs Home will not give up on an animal. They will put everything into it, whether it's medical needs, behavioural needs. It's a huge team effort. It makes me feel like I'm really making a difference. One month later, and Squeak and her new puppies are thriving in their new home. Puppies have been growing really well. The runt that we were a bit concerned about at first, she's actually like catching up to the other ones. The middle little girl is Molly. She's just the sweetest little thing. We actually think that she's going to be a lot like Squeak. And then you've got the big boy, which our little pet name for him is Chonkers because he's always just been that much bigger than the rest of them. But he's also the one, like the most, I guess, mature in terms of his development. So he's actually walking around a little bit. Squeak is going to the best possible home. She's going to a staff member at the Lost Dogs home, so she couldn't be in better hands. Come on. Scooby sick? Yeah. Nicole, husband Jerry and daughter Kira have arrived at the Bondi Referral Hospital Sash with their seven-year-old Labrador Scooby. We brought Scooby in just because he's having some issues sort of walking, playing in the park, getting up the stairs. He's just not being himself. I'm hoping it's nothing too serious, but we'll wait and see. Be gentle with Scooby. Oh, that's sweet, darling. They're hoping Dr Lisa Chimes will be able to provide some much-needed answers. I know, seven and a half months along, feeling the same. I was going to say, it's looking about the same. Scooby, it's nice to see you too, buddy. You don't look very sick. No, hey, he's, he's, he's a Labrador. <laughs> <laughs> Bring him through. Let's All right, have a beautiful. chat. Beautiful. Come on, Scooby. All right, buddy. As soon as I see Scooby, he's wagging his tail and he's rolling on his back. He doesn't seem like he's in any pain at all. But then again, he's a Labrador. Good boy. You come in here. That's it. Go away, take a seat. I'll take a seat as well. <laughs> we'll both sit down. We both need to sit in our current state. All right, Scooby, you sit down too, Hey, Mr Scoobs, what's been going on? 
So he's, he seems to be having some issues with one of his back legs. Okay. So we've been taking him down the park, kind of chucking the ball, and now when he comes back, he's sort of limping. We get home, he seems to be really stiff. Okay. So let's have a look at him. I want to get him outside, see him walking around, see what he can do, and then we'll bring him back in here and take a look. Okay. No All problems. right. No come, on, come on, Scoobs. Go for a little walk. Even though at first glance, Scooby looks okay, Nicole tells me that he's really not himself. I really need to take a look at him, get him to run around and see if I can see it for myself. All right, Scoobs. All right, darling. You've got to show you me ready? what's going on. You're going to show Lisa what's happening? Do you want this? <gasps> Do you want this? <laughs> All right, you ready? Run, 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 run. Okay, I see what you mean. He's got a little hop going hop. on there. He's sort of hobbling back a little bit. I mean, it's not an obvious limp, but there's definitely some sort of abnormality going on in the back legs. He's definitely got a bit of a bunny hop when he runs. He's swaying his back legs. He's not moving them in the way they should be. Good boy, Scoops. All right, Scoops. I'm gonna have a feel of your legs, because I definitely think it's the back legs that's causing the problem. Hey? Right, used to here. Oh, you see Stay still. Oh, he doesn't like those hips being moved back. He's still wagging his tail, but he's definitely resisting me when I'm trying to extend his hips back. Oh, no. sweetie. Got a bit sore there. Hey. Hey? Do you have a feel of the other side? All right, do you want to lie down for this side? Yeah, go on, down, down. Lie down. Good boy, sweetie. The rest of the legs feel all right. He's not reacting in any way. It's just when I get to his hips. Okay. He really doesn't like me extending them back. I can't really give you any more information now without taking some x-rays. And that's the way we're going to work out what's going on here. Okay. Okay. No problems. No problems. Come on, buddy. Come on, pup. All right. Let's go. Even though Scooby's not showing a lot of pain, I can tell when I move his hips that he doesn't like it. There's definitely something going on here and the x-rays are going to give me some more information. All right, Scooby Doobs. Can you sit down, sweetie pie? Can you sit down? Scooby drop. Scooby drop. I'm going to give him an anaesthetic so we can position him properly and hopefully I'll have some more information. A little bit cold, Scoobs. That's the way, honey. Boy, Scooby, we get some x-rays of you. Hmm? Do you want me to hold that? Out in reception, it's a nerve-wracking wait for results for owner Nicole and her family. Hopefully it won't be too long. We'll know soon. Yeah. He's a Labrador, so I always knew there was a risk in terms of hip problems. I mean, I'd love it not to be too serious, but, yeah, I, I am worried. All right, Scooby. Let's see what's going on. Scooby's hips don't look good at all. I'm pretty concerned. I'm going to get Andrew, one of our surgeons, to have a look, see what he thinks. Damn. All right, these are Scooby's x-rays. Yowza. Yeah. It's terrible. It was so much worse than what I was expecting. Cause... Yeah, that's... Oh, gosh. There's no normal hip lift there, neither either side. He's been putting up with that for years, and yeah, um, that's been a slow process mm, for many years. Yeah, I mean, it's chronic pain, and they will deal with it. But I, gee, I wouldn't want to have those hips. And I think there's only one way you can fix that. He needs a total hip replacement. Hoping you wouldn't say yeah. that. Yeah. Nicole adores Scooby. He's like her first child, and she would do anything to make him happy. So no matter how hard this is going to be for her, she wants what's best for Scooby. All right, so take a seat and I'll go through the results with you. Okay. Okay. Scooby's hips are not good. Right. All right. He has got severe degeneration of his hip joints. Okay. Uh, and one of the hips in particular is almost bone grating on bone. Okay. And the only thing that we will be able to do to give him relief would be a hip replacement. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, I, know, I know that sounds like a big deal a big and it job. is a big job. Yep. It's the only thing we can do for him to give him relief. Okay. 
Right. I don't like the fact of him going through the huge surgery. I mean, it's, you know, a Labrador uses the hips big time in terms of running and stuff, so it kind of breaks my heart a bit, but it has to be done, so I'm happy to have it done. So let's start with the one, because it is huge surgery, and we're not going to do both together. Okay. Do the one, see how it goes, and then reevaluate. Oh, poor puppy. Yeah. All right. All right. All ready? Yeah, I'm all ready. Okay. Good luck. Thanks. You're special. Scooby, I, want, yeah, I told no. you he's my special patient, so <laughs> look after No him. pressure, right? All right, Scooby, let's see what we can do. Hip surgery is really is a team effort. You need three surgeons in there knowing exactly what they've got to do so each part of the, the surgery goes well. Um, and, you know, if we don't, if we slip up at any stage, that's a disaster for Scooby. Andrew is assisting fellow specialist surgeon, Dr. Steve Fernside. Alrighty. Their first task is to remove Scooby's old hip joint. There it is. We've just taken his femoral head off, which is sort of the ball part of the ball and socket joint. This now gives us access to the actual cup, and so we're going to have to ream that out and we'll put an artificial cup in there or an artificial socket. So that's the next part of the surgery. Oh, that's good. So that's the new socket that we're going to put into the hip. It's essentially it's a press fit. So we're going to put it in position and then hammer it into place. There's no cement or anything, it's just going to sit there by friction between the actual new socket and the old bone. And this is quite a brutal surgery, but it actually has to be really precise. Um, so making sure that cup is at just the right angle, because if it's off by a little bit, he could easily dislocate after surgery, and that's the last thing we want for Scooby. 24 hours ago, Scooby was really struggling with his bad hips. Oh, sweetie. I'm a bit sore there. It's hoped he'll be able to run and play like a normal seven-year-old once the surgical team gives him a brand new ball and socket joint. So that's Scooby's new ball for his ball and socket joint. We're just going to put this on the end of that stem and I'm going to slide that into his new socket. This can be a bit of a struggle because we actually want the hip to be really tight. Almost there. That's it. There we go. There you go. No, it's spot on. Gotta be happy with that. With the surgery complete, it's a relief for Andrew and the team. But they can't rest easy just yet. So now we've got to get him into x-rays. We can take some x-rays and see how we put these implants in, you know, how accurate we, we've been with them, because that's going to be really important. How we're looking in mean, that position is good. It's parallel to the thigh bone, that's what we want. This cup looks nice, so it looks like all the implants are in the right position. Um, they're all angled how we want them. So that means we've minimised the risk of us having any complications. So no, I'm pretty happy with how that's gone. He's a good boy. Scooby, hey, can we take a look at you? Huh? Hi, sweetie pie. Do you want to get out and show me how you can walk? Huh? All right, Scoops. Slowly, 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 slowly. Dr Lisa Chimes slowly. is giving Scooby one last check and then it's home time. I know you want to just go running. It's only been a few days after Scooby's surgery and already he's putting weight on that leg. He seems comfortable and happy and this is exactly what I want him to be doing. Good boy, buddy. That's the way. Doing so well. What a good boy. Hey, look how good you're doing. Look at that. I am so impressed. I'm so impressed. Yes, your mum is going to be very happy too. Owner Nicole has never been away from Scooby before and is desperate to take her special boy home. 
Not having Skippy home has been quite sad, really. It's been quite lonely, very still. Um, I always say not having a dog to come home to and greet you at the door every night is, doesn't feel like you're coming home. Let's go. Let's go. He's a good boy. This is really just the beginning of Scooby's recovery. This boisterous chocolate Labrador is going to have to be rested in a crate for the next six to eight weeks. Now that is going to be a challenge for Scooby and poor Nicole. Hello. Hi, the puppy. Don't get too excited. Don't get too excited. Hello, puppy boy. Hi, Nicole. Hi, As soon as Scooby sees Nicole, he breaks out into song. He's howling, he's talking, he's saying, Mummy, I'm feeling good and I want to go home. Thank you so much, I really appreciate it. No good luck. You too. Good luck with the pregnancy and the birth. You too. <laughs> I'll see you later. See you Thank later. you, Lisa. Bye. Come on, bub. You know, considering the Great Barrier Reef is just a few kilometres away, probably should consider a holiday up here, but for some reason, I always get drawn into working because this clinic delivers some of the most interesting, most amazing cases I ever see. Chris is on a visit to North Queensland, and not for the first time, he's had a call to see if he can lend a hand at the Marlin Coast Veterinary Hospital. <laughs> Hello again. Hi, Chris. Nice to have you back. Good to be back. Can't wait to see what you got from me. Chris's first patient is already waiting. Albino rat Marcus and his owner Tia. This is my buddy Marcus. He came to me about two and a half years ago and he was a rescue animal, so he was someone else's unwanted pet. And the moment I laid my eyes on him, it was love at first sight. And we've been like this ever since. So. Marcus is two and a half, which is considered old for a rat and has been having trouble breathing. So he's been wheezing a little bit and also he's been having like snotty kind of substance coming from his nose and that can be a problem especially here in Cairns where the humidity gets really high. Hi there. Hello. How are you? I'm Chris. See ya. Nice to meet you. Who's this in here? This is my friend Marcus. Little Marcus. Yeah, he's an albino rat. Hello buddy. Alright, do you want to come through then? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Normally I associate Cairns with big dogs, with the occasional cat and big reptiles like snakes and crocodiles. You don't normally expect to see rats. So what's the reason that Marcus is in here? Um, I'm very worried about his um, respiratory problems. He seems to be having a little bit of wheezing from his lungs. And also there's been a fair bit of um, porphyry coming from his nose. So he's just, he's had weeping coming out of his yes. eyes and out yeah. of his nose. If rats have a weakness, it's probably their breathing. They are renowned for developing a respiratory illness that causes them to have a lot of difficulty getting air in and getting air out. But what's interesting is that you know, he, he has moved about 20 centimetres altogether, mm. but it looks like he, he's been for a run. Yeah. His eyes are, are shut quite a bit too. So he, he just looks a bit run down. Well, let's have a listen to his chest. Could I get you to yeah. hold him there for me? Look, I can certainly hear more noise coming from his chest than I should. So rather than the air coming in and out very smoothly, it, it comes in and out with, with, with more sound. So it's, it's, it sounds rougher. And that's usually because there's a build up of something in the airway, so the flow of the air is partially blocked. Mm. When I'm listening to Marcus's chest, I'm not hearing what I want to hear. When you hear good, healthy lungs, it's like a calm breeze just flowing in and out. But in his case, it's like a drinking straw at the bottom of a can of drink. There's a lot of turbulence and the air is being forced through narrow airways that have little blockages in there. So the big challenge at the moment is just working out exactly what has caused it. Mm. And obviously how we can treat this issue because my fear is that if we don't do anything, given Marx's age and condition at the moment, then this problem could get worse and could get worse a lot more quickly than, mm. than we want. My feeling is we're either facing a bacterial pneumonia or, or a mycoplasma pneumonia. 
which is a little organism that's not really like a bacteria and not really like a virus, it's kind of in between. I knew he had a little bit of wheezing happening, but I wasn't expecting it to be as big of a health problem as Dr. Chris explained that it was. That definitely hit me hard when Dr. Chris said that he is quite sick. What can we do for him? So we can treat that with antibiotics, so with some medicine, which, which will help. But you can treat all those bugs in the chest, but unless you help the body to get them out yeah. and to get rid of that mucus and to make breathing easier, then you may not actually see any benefit. The simple fact is that he needs help to get that mucus out of his chest. If it just stays there, his breathing will stay the same. The way I'm gonna get the mucus out of his chest, it may raise some eyebrows. I think we should nebulize him. So what we're gonna do is allow him to breathe in a mix of saline, but also a tiny little bit of antibacterial disinfectant. Oh, that sounds amazing. So when that happens, the mucus absorbs that fluid, becomes a little bit bigger, but also a lot more moist. And that way he can actually cough it up and bring it up himself. Fantastic, sounds really good, doctor. Yeah. I have to say that I was fearing for the worst, of course. So treatment wise, I'll anything for him. I would do absolutely anything for him. He's part of our family. Sounds good. Off you go, darling boy. Mum will see you soon. Hey Shannon. Hey, Chris. um I want to nebulize little Marcus here. Okay. You don't have little rat masks, I'm guessing. Probably not small enough for him, no. Do you have like a box, even like a little storage container? Yep, yep, I'll okay. find something for us, nice. yep. Thank you. Nebulizing certainly makes sense to me, but how are we gonna get that fluid into his chest and have it work its magic? Well, I've got some ideas. Okay, so we've got our mask, which is the box. We just need our nebulizer and our liquid. The whole goal here is to put moist, sterile, antibacterial air into Marcus's lungs. Now I've got my storage box, all I need to do is make up my magic solution. Okay, so we'll take two mils of this. The solution I'm using is one part antibacterial liquid, 250 parts saline. Add that together. Mix them together and find a way to get them into his lungs and all of a sudden, we're nebulizing. And we'll pop it in. I think this is gonna work. So, create a bit of a seal. And then if we put this in here, wedge that through there. Okay. And all of a sudden, Marcus, got your own personal steam room. Okay, let's start. All right. So straight away, we're already starting to see some water vapor appear in the tube, find its way into the box, which is perfect. The challenge is now trying to find a white rat in amongst white fog. It's a total white out there now, but importantly, he's breathing comfortably and he's getting that medicine right where he needs it. You know, anyone that's been into a steam room knows when you come out, your chest feels kind of clear and that's all because that water vapor is helping to, to loosen everything up and, and really open up your airways. And hopefully that's exactly what's happening with Marcus right now. The only giveaway that he's still in there is the fact his little tail is just sneaking out the side here. Oh, there it is. But the rest of him disappeared. It sounds strange to say this, but my hope is when Marcus comes out of this box, he's actually going to be coughing and spluttering. The whole idea there is that his own mechanisms are kicking into action. They're actually removing that buildup of mucus and his airways have already expanded. Out in reception, owner Tia is anxiously waiting for news of her beloved pet. Being apart from him is indeed very hard. So hopefully Marcus is feeling much better after the treatment and I'm looking forward to getting him home. All right, that is it. So Marcus, you in there? Here you are, little buddy. As I open the lid, a big waft of steam escapes, but through that mist, I see two big red beady eyes staring right back at me. 
that's a good start. Hey, Marcus. What happened, little buddy? Okay. So I can really hear that his, his breathing certainly does sound even more moist than it did before, but that, that's, that is actually a good thing. That was the whole idea of the process, was to try to, if you like, lubricate his airways, make sure that mucus uh, was able to, to really slide back out. You just need one more thing. A little shot of antibiotics. Sorry, little buddy. It's okay. It's okay. Oh, oh there we go. There you go, little man. Well done, you huh? You are good, aren't you? Well done. Yeah. Those eyes of yours are a lot wider than they were before. It's got to be a good sign, isn't it? You're more active, aren't you? He seems a lot happier now. Yeah. But you're not happy with the hair? Well, how do you do it? Are oh, you brush it forward? While I'm worried about Marcus's health, he seems more concerned about something else. His hairstyle. He's making some adjustments. You look good. Should we go back to Mum? Yeah? In a short period of time, we've managed to turn around what could have been quite a serious health issue for Marcus. And now, he's free to go back home and live what should hopefully be a long and happy life with Tia. Look who I have here. Oh, my boy. My <laughs> little boy. He's all steam clean too. Oh, beautiful. Look at that. Mm. Oh, those, he looks beautiful. Yeah, those eyes of his are a lot brighter mm. too. Given how much Tia clearly cares for Marcus, I know she's going to be a hard marker. But thankfully, the moment they're back together, she seems thrilled. And Marcus, going on those big red eyes, looks equally as happy. So he's been a little bit spluttery, which, which is good. It means he's starting to, to clear out some of that build up. But importantly, he's really active, he's really busy. Oh, good. Yeah, he's looking much better. Yeah, so Wonderful. it's telling us he's getting a lot more oxygen into his body. Mm. There's no doubt that Marcus is a unique patient and he's had a unique treatment today, but his relationship with Tia is no different to any other pet. And now, thankfully, both of them can breathe a lot easier. There you go. All Perfect. right, he's all yours. Thank okay, you take so care. much. Thank you. All the best. Scott has another new client coming in to his St. Margaret's clinic. Emma is bringing in the two new additions to her family, a three-month-old brother and sister that are ragdoll kittens. Hello, Emma. Good morning. I'm Hi, Scott. Hi, Scott. Nice to meet you. How are you? I'm good, thank you. I'm very looking forward to seeing your bundles of fluff. Hello. It's Kitty and Kion. Wow, you two are gorgeous. All right, come on in. Come on. They've settled in so, so well. The kids have been wanting kittens for about a year, and we chose the ragdoll cat because they're meant to be really, really lovely family cats. Let's have a look at these two absolute okay. stunners. On the day we went to get them, the kids were just completely beside themselves, and instantly they just settled in really, really well. And I know now they just feel such a part of the family. It's only been about four weeks, but yeah, the kids love them. Wow. So that one is Kion, wow. and the one at the back is Kitty. The names are pretty cool. <laughs> My daughter's four. Right, so, so that's probably so Kitty, I'm guessing. Kitty. <laughs> yeah, fairly over well. It's sort of up there with Puss, isn't it? It, <laughs> it is, a cat isn't it? Name. Exquisitely beautiful, though, aren't you? All right, so then there's Kion. And then this Kion. one's Kion. Hello, mate. You're very handsome, aren't you? It's the little boy who Emma is worried about. Kion has on his cheek what we think are warts, but we're not absolutely certain. All right, let's, let's pop you down and have a little look. And they don't seem to bother him. Yeah. Um, he seems really, really happy in himself. He's eating really well, he's drinking. Yeah, so more than one. One, two, three. And I'm assuming that Kitty doesn't have them. Not that, that I've right? seen, no. Hmm. They are not normal for a kitten. There is a number of possibilities, but as they're dark and they've grown sort of quickly in a short mm. space of time, uh, I think it is probably worthwhile that we just take one of them off, mm. uh, take it away, send it to the lab and just make sure that it's nothing to be concerned about. I think there's a possibility it could be what we call a classic wart mm. um, produced by a papillomavirus, but it isn't as common in cats as it is as dogs. 
This virus is something that's present in kittens when they're immunocompromised, which means they have a weakened immune system. Now that might just be something developmental, they're young and they're prone to viruses, but it can also be as a result of some viruses that specifically depress the immune system. The most worrying types being feline AIDS or feline leukemia. As well as taking samples from the lump, Scott will also take a blood test to hopefully rule out the other diseases. Unfortunately, feline AIDS and feline leukemia is contagious, so that if Kion did turn out to have this disease, we'd also have to check Kitty, and the future of them living in the same house would also be in question. I do feel really nervous. They're such a part of the family already, and I didn't realise how much you could fall in love with cats, because <laughs> I've never had cats before. And I think also because the kids have taken to them so well, and they adore them so much, that if anything ever happened to one of them, I don't know what I would say. OK, you can say goodbye to Mummy. Come here. No problem. I feel nervous. I feel a bit sad that we're having to go through this when we've only had them for four weeks. It's, I'm pretty sad, but hopefully he'll be fine. Bye-bye. Hi, bro. Hey. <laughs> Poor little mate. I know. You can't go with your sister. You have to stay with me, mate. All right, then. OK. OK, Ems. Well, I will give you a call as soon as he's back okay. home. All right. And then we just wait so and see what these interesting lumps turn out to be. Great. Thank bye. you. Bye. Bye. Say bye, Mummy. Say bye. Bye bye, bye darling. Bye. Hi, Ems. <laughs> Look how cute he is. Oh, no. Look. He's so gorgeous. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my beautiful blue eyes. Oh, my goodness. He's just got some unfortunate little blemishes on that otherwise perfect face. Oh, you beautiful hey? little boy. My guess is that they're driven by a virus called papillomavirus. But to be sure of that, I need to take a sample of one, send it to the lab and find out. This is the one that I'm most concerned about, that little lump there. Oh, wow. Uh, but okay. he's got two more on that side as well. And they are growing oh. quite quickly in a short space of time and they're dark. The lump I've decided to remove on Kion's face is the one on the left-hand side, just because it's very close to his lip. That's a point where there's not much hair, and I'm hoping that by removing that one, it won't affect his stunning good looks. Oh yeah, you're a sucker for a good-looking, blue-eyed, blonde-haired chap. Do you know any? No. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> I do, it's the cat. <laughs> All right, well, let's get this done, get you back to mummy, eh? Oh, is he going to be very, very brave? Oh, dear. Oh, he's going to be very, very brave. <laughs> oh. There you go. Yeah, that was less impressive, wasn't there it? There we go. It's not your friend anymore. New. But before they remove the lump... Mm, it's very interesting, isn't it? Mm. Scott needs to make sure there is nothing more sinister threatening Kion. What I'm doing here is taking a blood test for feline AIDS and feline leukaemia, both which have very uh, significant ramifications on the future of Kion. If Kion did have AIDS or leukaemia, I think that his owners will be devastated. They clearly are so in love with these two kittens, and I know that if he was unwell, Emma would be crushed. The lump is easily removed. A sample will be sent to the lab for analysis, and the results of the blood tests for feline AIDS and leukaemia will be known before the kitten goes home. He'll be fine, darling. He'll be fine, I promise. Two hours later, Emma and her children Isla and Archie arrive to pick up Kion. Kion's sister Kitty has also come along for the reunion. Do you think she's looking forward to seeing her brother? Yeah. yeah. Are you looking forward to seeing her brother? Yeah. yeah. Kion means everything to the family, and Kitty does too. And the children love them both so, so much, so having them both home um, together this evening is going to be amazing. <gasps> hey, hey! Look who I've got! Hey. Well, he's very beautiful and he's done you very proud. He's been yeah. such a brave boy today. And the little lump has come off very nicely, as I you can see. see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, the great news as well is that we did an AIDS leukemia test just yeah. to ensure that uh, that's not the cause for this wart developing. And thankfully, it's come back as negative. Thank God for that. <laughs> yeah. Really missed you. Oh. Clearly, they're massively relieved that he's got through the anaesthetic. 
and got through the surgery and he doesn't have AIDS or leukemia, which is brilliant. But now I feel that little bit of extra worry seeing how much the family love this kitten and I really hope that the results from the lump come back okay. It'll be an anxious few days before the results come back from pathology. We just need to wait and uh, be patient and hope for the best yeah. that this lump is in fact a wart. Yeah. Uh, and if it is, then hopefully the other two should go away in time, but uh, we'll let you know as soon as we do. Today has been such a massive day for the family. I think that any trip to the vets is kind of filled with nerves, but today having, having an operation was a really, really terrifying thing. So yeah, I'm just pleased that it's over. Should All we right. say thank you to the vet? Thank you. Thank you, Scott. You're very welcome. Carol All right, well, you guys have a nice evening. Are we all going to carry them? Yeah, we'll okay. see you soon. Yes, we'll carry them home. Bye, guys. <laughs> Bye. See ya. This Bye, way. guys. Bye. 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 No, she likes that, Archie. Good boy, Kion. It's been a week since Scott removed a lump from the face of three-month-old ragdoll kitten, Kion. Good boy. And this evening, he's coming by to deliver the lab results to Kion's family. Hi, Emma. Hi, Scott. How are you? Nice to see you. And you, I'm the bearer of news. Well, come in. The kittens are just in the lounge. Thank you. Well, Kyan doesn't seem to have held the surgery against me, does he? <laughs> I think he looks pretty happy there. You are pretty chilled, my friend. And he's yeah. so happy to be home. Good. Well, the happy news keeps on flowing. Yeah. And that these little lumps that he had on his face aren't anything to worry about. OK. They haven't found any cancer or tumour cells, yeah. which is brilliant. Good. And Good. it's also not a wart, so ah. it hasn't the capacity to be able to spread. So yeah. we yeah. shouldn't see any more of them. The ones that he's got, hopefully, are the only ones he'll ever have. Fantastic. So I think rather than looking at that lump on his face and thinking, oh, that's unsightly and something to worry about, yeah. why don't we just call it his beauty spot? That's a Instead. great idea. Yeah, that's let's just a great idea. turn it into a Makes positive. It even more beautiful. Yeah. Even cause... more handsome. I feel so relieved. We've been really, really worried. Um, nobody's known what it actually was. So to actually find out that it is nothing to worry about is just fantastic. The kids have completely fallen in love with them. And I can't imagine what it would have been like should we have had to lose him. Yeah, and he seems pretty chilled about the whole situation, <laughs> doesn't he? <laughs> Mm. Look at that. Mm. You want to shake hands? Yeah. Thank you, Scott. You're welcome. <laughs> Kion seems an incredibly happy, healthy boy, and the whole family seemed very happy. So I'm really glad as a vet that we've got the result we have. I like that camera. <laughs> 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 Hi, I'm Dr. Danny. If you enjoyed this video, then please remember to subscribe to the Bondi Vet YouTube channel. Click on the screen now to continue watching more great content. And if you love Bondi Vet, then check out our Bondi Pet Marketplace at bondipet.com for a great range of Aussie pet products and services. We can't wait to see you there.